So this bad boy here, Scooter Smith, half barrel. As soon as you pop open the box, you get that aroma of American white oak. Fooder Smith reached out to us, said, hey, we make a badass fooder. Do you wanna play around with it? And I said, yes, please. Ooh, that smells awesome. So you can use a fooder for bulk aging or you can ferment right in the fooder. Uh, this is really cool. They sent a cool dog tag with it. Uh, just has the year built um, an American white oak and the size of the fooder on it. So that's a really nice touch. We just got everything unboxed. It comes with all the fittings and gaskets you need. They're using inch and a half tri clamps, which is super nice, super easy to clean. It's what we use in our equipment. So if you have one of our brewing systems, you can swap the tri clamps and gaskets, which will make things super easy. You won't have to keep track of different size gaskets and clamps. So you get six gaskets, five tri clamps. Uh, looks like a blank cap, a 45 or is that a 90? A 90 degree, uh, inch and a half um, with ferrules on it. I'm assuming this is a sample port. Um, I've never used one of these, but I'm assuming this would be where you take a sample uh, to see where the beer is as it ages in the barrel or sours in the barrel, whatever you're using it for. Uh, it looks like two really nice butterfly uh, dump valves. Um, our goal today is to rehydrate the fooder. Um, with any barrel, you want to rehydrate it. The wood will re-expand, make sure there's no leaks. And then they also recommend storing it full of liquid as well. We're going to store it with water due to the fact that uh, we're still planning our first brew day for it. And we're considering either doing a really nice dark beer that'll age really nice, a big, robust stout to uh, age on the oak. Um, we're gonna work with the local brewery most likely on the first beer. I have no experience with a fooder. We have no experience with it. I'm assuming you have no experience with it. So make sure to subscribe, follow us on the journey using the fooder. Um, we'll, be, we'll be doing a lot with it, brewing a lot of really good beers with it. Probably doing a Solera project at some point. Solera projects are really, really nice because you continuously you know, can pull beer off of it. So that's kind of the goal for us with this. Um, so, you know, you'll follow along with us as we learn how to use it because at this point, you know, it, it's all new to us. So we're going to bring in some pros that um, have a lot of experience. They have fooders at their breweries. So we're kind of going to do whatever they want to do, whether it's a sour or a big, early, dark. Um, but I'm really excited. It's something I've always wanted to do. The quality on this, I mean, it, it's impeccable. Um, super, super nice. I want, kind of went off it off camera. Um, really beautiful. Um, for the price point, honestly, it, I think it's a bargain. It's a half barrel, which I think is 21 gallons. I'm not sure how full you fill a fooder. Um, I'm assuming probably most of the way up. Um, if you have one of our 10 gallon kettles that brews five gallon batches, you'd have to, you know, brew four beers to fill it. Um, but you know, it's still not that large and that that's an impossible task. So, um, super excited, super cool to have something this size in the homebrew level. So we're going to go ahead and just get the fittings installed to the fooder. Looks super straightforward. Oh, looks like the end cap just gets installed on the top here and uh, that will be the fill port and I'm kind of just doing a dry fit um, get everything set up and then we'll obviously go ahead and fill it with water You can see there's some oak in there from the manufacturing process. So that's, you know, why you want to go in and soak it and clean it before you use it for a production beer. We'll empty all the water, add some water and citric acid, and then we will uh, also clean all the stainless fittings with some PBW. 
Uh, just make sure everything is nice and clean. Can you Google how to use a butterfly valve? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so we're gonna put the uh, 90 on. So we're just gonna undo the plastic cap on our gasket. Get the gasket on there. All right. Super easy assembly. Everything's just tri-clamp and gasket. So when you get the barrel, you wanna hydrate it, which is simply adding warm water or steam. In a commercial setting, you'll have steam. We're home brewers, so we're just using hot water and the water basically is gonna get absorbed by the wood, it expands and makes a watertight seal. Without further ado, um, step one is gonna be make sure your valves are closed um, and everything is nice and tight. Um, butterfly valve, you just pull on it and then lift and then it'll lock into place so that's open. So you just pull it lock in the place that's closed. So let's double check. It's seated in the right hole and you know, give it a, you can give it a, the old finger test. 911, what's your emergency? Um, yeah, uh, so I, I need a cleanup service. That feels real nice. And a doctor or whatever. This is your sample valve. I don't know what's open and what's closed. gonna throw that out there so um, we're filling it below this line so we're not gonna worry about it I'll figure it out I'll do some reading off video um, and when we fill it up over this line tomorrow um, then we'll make sure that it's closed so I'm assuming that's probably open that's probably open this might be closed or this I don't know what am I a, a guy who knows things so we're gonna go ahead put our dog tag on there all right, we're gonna fill it slowly with the warm water just cause the fooder's been sitting longer than I had hoped um, dry. So we just wanna make sure it's not gonna just pour out, um, which would be on us, not, not the fooder company. So. so the rehydration process will take about four days. You just slowly fill it, um, drain it and incrementally add more. And then by the fourth day, it'll be full of water, watertight. And uh, so we're just obviously, sh we just showed the first step and we'll do the rest off camera. You can see over here, we've, uh, we had a really slow drip. You can see the water on the table. Um, and you can kind of see it was leaking from right up in here, but it stopped already, so. Um, the warm water is obviously rehydrating the wood. Tomorrow we'll use the dump valve on the bottom to get everything out, drain it, and then we'll fill it up probably to about here, drain it the next day, the third time we'll fill it to like here, and then the fourth day we'll fill it all the way up and then dump it, and then we'll go ahead and put some citric acid in there, clean her up, clean all the fittings, and then we'll be ready to use the fooder. So we're super excited about it. If you wanna buy one of these things, they're super well-made. Fittings are all really, really nice. Um, Foodersmith.com um, and they make the half barrel, which we have, and then they have much larger sizes for uh, commercial breweries. But this is the perfect size for, for us home brewers. So super excited. Thanks for checking out this video. We have some super exciting videos coming up using this fooder. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get a notification of when those videos go live. Thanks for watching. We'll check you on the next one. You've been foodered. <laughs>